kick this video off, I go in by combing the hair. I want to get everything lifted off of the head. I want to lift the curl pattern as much as possible. But at the end of the day, I want to make sure that this hair is completely prepped for me to be able to run my clippers completely through it. I go in with my Andes ZR2s using the number two blade and I'm keeping everything consistent floating over the hair, not digging these clippers into the scalp because if you dig these clippers into the scalp, the client can feel it. It will not feel pleasant at all and it's gonna be more of an irritating feeling or a tugging feeling. So when you're using a detachable clipper, take your time, kind of kick that heel up of the blade and kind of let it just ride over the top of the hair. You wanna make sure this is a smooth transition and it smoothly go through. Paying attention to the calic and cutting with the original original pattern of the hair and just keeping everything consistent. My next step is to go in with my Babeless FX trimmers and I want to set in a guideline at the bottom of the temple area, almost equivalent with the top of the ear, just so I could give myself enough room to open up and start my fade. The step after that, I go completely open with my Andes Masters, giving myself about a half of an inch. I want to give myself some room before I start to create my transition. My next step after that is to go in with my Andes Masters using my number two guard to clear some of this bulk and start to create a nice transition. The next step after that is to go in with a one eighth guard, which is equivalent to a number one guard halfway. And then I'll start to close my guard more and more to create a nicer transition. As you guys can see, I'm getting the fade transition already. It's looking real clean. And I go behind it with a 1 16th just to clean it up and hit all of them loose hairs or them slight dark hairs that's separating it from a good transition. Then I go completely halfway close using my Babeless FX clippers and I want to just keep everything consistent. I'm going to open my clipper up the higher I am in my taper and I'm going to close the clipper the lower I am in my taper. I just want to create a nice transition from bald to dark hair because he got a number two up top. So I kind of just basically broke it into levels and different panels just so you guys can see me transition this fade opposed to starting from the bottom and going all the way up top. Then I'll go behind it with my Andes Masters and play with the corner of my blade using the hilt of my blade, flicking in and out, brushing one and fading one, and just keeping everything consistent and making sure that this blend is coming all the way together for you guys. That's all what it's always been about. It's always been about remaining consistent and just consistently putting the shot up. Shout out to my boy Jerm Boomin too for putting up an amazing, amazing, amazing track with this. This What's It Gonna Be by Busta Rhymes and Janet Jackson, one of my old school blasts from the past. So please, if you do, go follow my boy Jerm Boomin on Instagram at Jerm Boomin. My next step, I go in using my Andes Masters completely open, giving myself a half of an inch and then a 1 16th guard right here because I want to kind of blend into some of this darkness you don't want it too dark at all you just want to be able to create some transition from the bottom of the taper and then going into the top of the beard line and then from that point i would pull out my babelesses again and then i'll just basically blend this all the way out consistency is key remaining humble is key and just having fun doing what you're doing that's always been one of the most important things about being a barber to me i just i'm always hooping i'm in my own lane when i'm in the shop i ain't worried about nobody else i'm just hooping i'm putting up shots Then I hop in my back taper using my Babeless FX trimmers. I'm giving myself about an inch to an inch and a half because I'm sizing up my canvas. I'm looking at the profile with a client head, and I know I got a lot more room to work with than what I normally do. So we're not going to do no small taper. And just when you get way more room, you got to stretch out your guidelines. That's super important. Remember that. When you get more room in any area, just stretch out the guidelines, and you will get the same taper effect. So as you guys can see, I'm giving myself about an inch with every guideline that I approach in the back. Just because I got way more room to work with than the average client. Then I go in with my 1 8 guard, giving myself another inch. I'm halfway closed here, and I just want to slightly but surely bring in a transition. That's super, super, super important. When you guys are fading, I'm not going to lie. You can fade from bottom to top, but you will have less hard of a trouble if you fade it in panels just because you will be able to see, you know, which level is which level. You just don't forget your guard system and remember where you at in your fade, and it will come together. So as you guys seen, I barred it out, then I went open, then I did a 1 8 
safe halfway closed and then as you guys can see i'm gonna go in with a number two guard and it's completely closed and i want to hit at this area too just because i know the bulk or the majority of this haircut is at a number two guard so a number two guard against ain't gonna do nothing to it but just bring the transition together way more for me so as you guys see i'm putting it in layers and in panels and i will blend those panels out at a consistent rate just to show you guys that you can create tapers with panels and you don't have to start from the bottom all the way to the top and overwork yourself Then my next step, I go in with my 1 16th guard, and I got this halfway, and I'm just basically flicking in and out at this middle line between my open and my 1 8th guard, and as you guys can see, I'm starting to create transition. I'm starting to see something come from this, and that's what it's about with your tapers or anything that you're doing. The more that you consistently put that shot up, it's going to drop. Don't forget that. Just keep having fun. Just keep hooping and just keep putting the shots up, and you will get better. This thing come with repetition. Like, in any game, repetition is key. If you're not practicing there's no way you're gonna be perfect in that game so just you know remain humble and just keep brushing one keep fading one and having fun with this and i start completely at my bottom halfway close and i start to break into that one guard and as you guys can see the higher i'm in my fade i open my lever up some more but right here i'm gonna drop it down completely close and i'm blend out that bottom line as you guys can see transition is coming together super 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 well just playing my part all the way, halfway and completely closed, halfway and completely closed. It's crazy, man. And I go open when I'm up in the fade in this area, and I'm going to drop it completely closed the lower I get to the bottom of the fade. Creating more transition and more transition. My next step is to go in with a one and a half guard, which is basically a three sixteenth guard when you're using the speedo guide guards. And I'm halfway closed here, and I'm just giving myself room just so I could create a nice transition. And as you guys can see, I pretty much got the back taper lace. And my next steps on this side is just to basically do everything that I did on the opposite side, but I'm going to speed it up tremendously and let it get its way all the way through that. In cases like this, when I got a client that has everything, the, the facial profile, the fullness of the lineup, the nice grade of hair, and a full beard, I'm trying to accommodate them. I'm trying to slam dunk this. That's one thing that I do or worry about in the shop is just me and my clients. I'm not worried about third party conversations that's going on. I'm trying to put this on a glass. And especially when I'm recording it for YouTube, I'm trying to get y'all, you know, flavor. I want to get y'all pop, flair, all of that great stuff. I want to just make sure that my client lead a shop feeling like he ain't never had a haircut better than that. And that's my thing. With your clients, every haircut better get better. You know, the next haircut or the previous haircut better not be better than the haircut that you do this week. It's no reason you should be downgrading on any of your client. If anything, every haircut should get better or should be at the same, same, same rate. When you display that the haircut can't be as good as the previous haircut, it goes to show your inconsistency. And that's not what I'm in a shop for. I'm in a shop for consistency. I like putting up reps. And at the same time, I like icing my clients. I like making sure that they got every and anything you know possible when they sit in this chair that's my job i signed up to impact lives and i will my next step, I go in with some wrapping lotion, which is basically like a mousse. And I wanted to basically pull all his hair forward. I want to lay all of this hair down because I could have just jumped into the lineup. But this mousse helped me lay the hair down. It helped me really train the hair. Then I go in and I spray my M spritz and I just brush the hair forward and bring it down. I want to brush and bring everything forward. And the most important thing of any wave is haircut is to close your clippers and float over the waves and float over the hair. You want to knock all of the scraggly legs off. You want to knock all little loose hairs off you want this hair to be as solidified as possible and everything brought forward prepping it for a dope 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 lineup then we start in the back line which i do my verticals and once i get to the tip of the ear i convert to the corner of my blade and work my way all the way around the corner staying super consistent using one hand to fold the ear down and getting the lineup as clean as possible As you guys can see, we got a nice, nice, nice neckline. 
My next step is to drop my vertical line behind the back of the beer. This is basically my frame I work. I do things like this. I do the neckline, then I do the back of the beer line, just so I can know for a fact that my frame out is super perfect. You know, if your frame out is perfect, you can almost see the rest of the haircut by the time it's done. And as you guys can see, it's coming together super clean. I'm cleaning up the hair that grows on the ear. It's just cleanliness. It's presidential services with me. When you get in my chair, I'm going to be super precise. I'm going to be super clean. And I want to just make sure that you leave the shop completely happy. Repeating the same steps on the right side of the head. Not doing my verticals. And once I get to the top of the ear, converting to the corner of my blade to work my way around the corner. Super clean. Dropping that vertical bar, and I got it right together. Cleanliness is next to godliness. I want all y'all to know that any of my beginner barbers, I know advanced barbers don't care too much about that, but any of my beginning barbers, cleanliness is next to godliness. The more clean, the more precise you can be, clients will just automatically deal with you off the strength of that. Being super precise and super clean is like super potent and super essential to my process. I brush the hair, start in the middle, and then I break my way into the left side of the client's head. And as you guys can see, you got a nice, 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 clean, straight line starting off. This is a fair lineup because my client don't got no light spots. He's not balding or anything like that. I got a real nice full lineup, so you shouldn't struggle with a lineup like this. And then I start in the middle and work my way all the way to the right. I want to apologize for some of the blur. I didn't look back at my camera right here, but after this, it'll be back in motion. And as you guys can see, super clean. Create nice 90 degree angles and clean lines. And then I go in with my boy Sean Cuts Hair Color Enhancement Card assisting it with my product, the Beam Team Coolest Compressor and No Drip, spraying at a three to four inch distance radius using the card to stay inside my boundaries and applying color at 100% rate ratio. There's one thing that I truly enjoy about using this card and my color. Like when I put these two together, they Shaq and Kobe and they prime. It's impossible to fail. I'm laying the law like a legislator when it come to this color and just when it come to enhancing and, and taking my my haircut to another level that's what i tell y'all about like when i say shape shifting shape shifting is showing y'all how to break into another lane of y'all haircut so after i laid the color i hit it with m spritz and now i'm finna go behind it with my barber magic pencil using my barber magic pencil the same way women they use you know they concealer for their eyebrows they first clean up their eyebrows which is i cleaned up his line and after i cut his hair then they like to add color or any filly into their eyebrows and then after doing that they like to conceal the eyebrow which is basically what i'm doing to the lineup right now and then they blend it out with a blending brush and i'll be just blending it out with my trimmers it's just like applying different hacks that you see in different you know different industries and putting it in barbering and applying the same thing and getting the same type of results i'm using my clippers just so i can basically kill that contrast so it's not too harsh but it gives a nice crispy clean look and as you guys can see i got my dog icy hitting the top of the mustache lines right now and let's break into business i lean my client back i angle my razor at a 45 degree angle stretch that skin and bring everything back to its highest point this client specifically likes keeping his beard super wide super clean keeping everything super full and as you guys can see i'm just taking my time nudging it one by one and then doing all of the cleanup work above it and as you guys can see the line does look rigged right now and i'm gonna get it all the way together i'm gonna hit it with my whisk just so i can for what it truly is because cleanliness is next to godliness and i go right back at it repetition is key a lot of people would have stopped after that first time and in order for me to become super perfect or get it super perfect once i dust it off i'm right back at it like i preach that non-stop repetition is key the more times you do it the more times you put that shot up it's gonna eventually drop and when it drop it's all net baby so as you guys can see, I'm stretching the skin, angling that razor at a 45 degree angle. I got my boy looking icy. This video is crazy right now. I go under the neckline and I just clean and clear this panel. I got that boy so crispy, man. Got him right in the game. Tape on point, line up super crazy. And he had a photo shoot this day. This was just like, man, this was it right here. Now I lean them back, and I'm still angling that razor at a 45 degree angle, bringing everything backwards at the top of the lineup. You want it as clean as possible on all aspects of the lineup. And that's what I'm trying to achieve at all times.
fire, bro. It's just fire, man. Going across the grain with the grain and applying the same steps on this side to the next side. Remember, you got to angle that raise at a 45 degree angle and you got to stretch that skin. You got to see the line for what it truly is. And even when you see it ragged like this, you go back and you dust it off. You want to make sure you clear that panel so you can see everything for what it truly is and go back and really, really put that detail on that line. And as you guys can see, I got that line super, super clean. clearing the panel at the bottom. And clearing the top of the mustache now. Nah. Using the nose to basically stretch that skin area and hit the top of that mustache and bringing it all the way together. And now cleaning up the beard and cleaning up all of the loose hairs, making sure that everything is in a place. As you guys can see, the haircut clean, line up wicked, taper in the game. I got my boy through and through this, one of the most cleanest, precise, symmetrical haircuts you guys have ever seen on my channel. And I just truly enjoyed that I was able to bring this one to y'all today. So in an imperfect world, we do get these clients that come in the barbershop looking super crazy. And as barbers in this world, it's only up to us to change that outcome. And all of the steps that I applied and told y'all through the beginning of the video to the end, you follow those and it's impossible to not get results like this. Let's lock in. Hashtag TBT in that comment section. Hashtag Glacier Gang. Hashtag 2020 year to shapeshift this year. All of that. If you was able to sit through the 16 to 17 minute video, please like, share, subscribe, comment. Yeah, hit that notification button. All of that. And until next time, and may God bless.